Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my revamped 1 to 99 Herblore Guide. With this skill, you can make potions to help out in your adventures. You normally do this by cleaning herbs, adding them to vials of water, and then adding a secondary ingredient to the potion for a huge range of benefits in combat and skilling. Herblore is infamous for being one of the most expensive 99s to achieve in the game. Although the good news is that you will be able to sell back your materials to the Grand Exchange for a little bit of money back unlike other viable skills if you are a normie account. If you find this video useful, consider subscribing with notifications on, dropping a cheeky like, and you can even become a channel member for instant access to our Discord and a ton of benefits in the channel. These are all the quests that provide herbal experience as of the time of making this video. Remember that some of them have an herbal or level requirement themselves, and you may not be able to do them right away. And just like skills such as fire making, fletching, and cooking, as long as you have the money, herbal is just so fast that it's not recommended to get extra experience from quests, again, if you're an unrestricted account. The quest I'm talking about is Druidic Ritual. Without it, you can't even interact with a skill, as anything that provides herbal or experience is just going to be locked without it. If you've never done it, it's extremely simple, and it's only going to take you about 5 or 10 minutes. Up next we have Shades of Morton. During the quest, you will gain access to the recipe for a potion called Serum 207. This is an alternative method, not really recommended even for a few levels, but an important item for the quest and the minigame nevertheless. The quest Sogar Flesh Eaters unlocks the ability to make a powerful potion called Sandview Serum. This is very popular for a few bosses in the game, and almost mandatory for the Nightmare. This potion will also go in the alternative method since it's pretty tedious to make, but you're gonna make a little bit of profit. The final quest for now is Dragon Slayer 2. After clearing this Grand Master adventure, you will be able to make both Super Anti-Fire and Extended Super Anti-Fire potions, which are useful when fighting dragons. Another decent potion and another alternative way to train we will mention in a few minutes. And finally, not really a quest, but I recommend 100% Arceus Favor. With it, you will gain access to the Archaeus spellbook for one particular spell that's going to help us make money with Herblor. It's not mandatory, but will be a great option if you're tired of blowing a ton of cash on this skill. For Herblor, we don't really have a lot of specific items to aid in our training. The only one that's going to provide slightly more profit is an Amulet of Chemistry. This enchanted jade amulet will make it so you have a 5% chance to make a 4-dose potion instead of a 3-dose when combining ingredients. When this happens, the amulet will lose one of its charges, and when it reaches zero, it will crumble to dust and you will need to wear a new one. If you decide to train Herblor past 99, the Herblor cape makes it so you can make an unfinished potion with the grimy herb. Normally you may only do this with clean herbs, but because you're skipping the step, you're also gaining experience when performing said action. Anything outside these two items is just simply vials of water, a pestle and mortar, a grimy or a clean herbs, and all the secondary ingredients for your potions we will talk about in a few minutes. So, make sure to keep a healthy amount of materials in your bank. Just like many bank standing skills we have had so far, I only recommend the Idle Notifier plugin which will let you know when your character has stopped performing a certain action. It helps with maximizing experience even if you are AFK. A plugin I haven't mentioned until now is Banked Experience. This plugin will see what you have in your bank, and will let you know how much experience you have in supplies so you know when it is a good time to start training if you are going for a specific level. Alright scapers, before I tell you how to go from levels 1 to 99 in the most efficient, profitable, or fastest way possible, I will take just a few moments to talk about something we haven't mentioned up until this point, and that is something called GP per XP. I am doing this now because, as I mentioned before, Herblor is one of the most expensive skills to train. Because of this, outside of telling you what to train with, I also want to show you how you can train if you are on a budget. And if you can't follow any of the paths I will talk about next. GP per XP basically means how much money you are making or spending for every single point of experience in a skill. Gathering skills will almost always have positive GP per XP since you're simply collecting items to sell later, while skills such as Herblore, Prayer, and Construction will almost always have negative GP per hour because you're spending money to train. So, in order not to give you a basic math lesson on an old school RuneScape guide, whenever you visit the wiki for training methods, you will see a column named GP per XP. This means how much it will cost to gain a single point of experience, and the higher it goes, the more money you will make. On the other hand, the lower it goes, the more expensive it will be. This guide will focus on a pretty good balance of GP per XP, so keep this in mind whenever you are researching information based on what is available to you. As I said before, the very first thing we need to do is a Druidic Ritual quest to unlock the entire skill. And it's also going to give us our first three levels. 
you'll need raw bear, rat, beef and the chicken pieces, so collect them on your way to Taverly. This is extremely quick and then you can go straight to the Grand Exchange for materials. Sorry, Ironman players. Okay, let's finally start making some potions. From levels 3 to 5, you'll be making attack potions with Guam and the Ice of Newt. You'll need a staggering 6 potions to reach our next milestone. Something that's slightly cheaper to make are anti-poisons with Marantile and Unicorn Horn Dust. Target level for this one is 12, so you'll need to make 32 of these. Anti-poisons have some of the lowest GP per XP in the game, so if you have budget issues, these are great to make for about 90k XP per hour. At level 12 we can make strength potions, and these will almost always be needed because it's one of the few potions our free-to-play brothers and sisters can use. Get yourself 143 unfinished Terramin potion and Limport roots, and then turn them all into potions to get to level 26 for our next brew. This is where we can start making energy potions, requiring both Herolander and the Chocolate Dust. For even lower cost, you could grind your own chocolate too, but you will need to make 321 of these. Their effect isn't super popular, but we're just focusing on experience for now. After making 321 energy potions, you will be level 38. Exactly what we need to make prayer potions. The GP per XP on these are also great if you ever want to train at a low cost, reaching upwards of 210,000 experience per hour. At this level, this is actually quite huge. This time you'll need 356 Raynar and Snapegrass to make them. This will take you to level 45, which will allow us to make super attack potions. Just like the one prior, GP per XP will be extremely humble, although slightly higher. For a maximum of 250,000 experience per hour, you'll need 621 Irid potions and Ice of Newt for your super attacks. At level 52, you can make super energy potions out of Avento and Mortemire Fungus. These will almost always be on demand because of another potion we will talk about next. GP per XP is also great for this one for a nice and juicy maximum experience of about 290,000 per hour. You only need around 366 of them. Also related to combat, you can now make super strength potions at level 55. With Quorm and Limpward Roots just like normal strength potions, our next milestone is level 63, which means you need to make about 1616 of them for a maximum of 300,000 experience per hour. So, it's pretty neat. Super Restores will always be on high demand because of bossing and PVMing. And this is what we will do next. With both the Snapdragon and Red Spider Eggs, we are going to start needing a lot more potions at a whopping 7,769 Super Restores to go from levels 63 to 77. This will be around 350,000 XP per hour. Remember Super Energy Potions? Well, we are going to need them since combining this with Amylized Crystals will give us the very popular Stamina Potion. This time, we have two Milestone being levels 81 and 87. Respectively, you'll need about 7,031 or 24,477 4-dose stamina potions. And why I say 4-dose is important because of the following. I'll take a little break to explain how some potions work. Instead of just an unfinished potion with a secondary ingredient, some of them require a finished potion and let's call it a third ingredient. Since these can stack, you can use one inventory spot for the ingredient and fill the other 27 spots with potions. Use the ingredients on them in order to make the new one. The cool thing about it is that this works similar to, let's say, the one tick Karam one method. You can use the ingredient on a potion every tick, and by holding down your spacebar, you can literally make one every single tick, leading to even higher experience rates per hour. These potions will consume a certain amount of the third ingredient per dose, which is why it's recommended to have four doses to maximize your gains. So, for stamina potions, you can either AFK or go degen mode for upwards of 520,000 experience per hour. Okay, back on track. If you stopped at level 81, you will unlock one of the most iconic ways to train, the Ceradomen Brew. This is what a lot of people used to go from levels 81 to 99, as it provides great experience per hour at a whopping 450,000 at maximum efficiency. For which you will need 60,232 potions. If you want something slightly more budget friendly, we will stop at 87 for a total of 9,886 Ceradomen Brews. Up next we can make Anti-Venom. This works like stamina potions, so to make them, you will need antidotes and 5 Zulra scales per dose. So, ideally 20 of them per full potion. These are almost always on demand, and our next stop is going to be level 90, for which you need 11,451 4 dose potions. Okay boys and girls, we are already in the 90s, so not much more to go. You can make super combat potions with 4 dose super attack, 
Strength, Defense and One Torso, and this isn't as high experience as some previous methods, but uh, XP per hour is lower because you can't make as many per hour. For experience rates at about 320k in that time, you need to make 7807 for the next milestone. Level 92 unlocks Super Anti-Fire Potions after completion of Dragon Slayer 2. This is the only profitable potion to make, and if you want to make up for the amount of cash you have lost so far, stick to these until 99 for a total of 50,133 potions made. If you really don't want profit, you can instead stop at level 94 to make Antivenom Plus from regular Antivenom and One Torstal. This offers upwards of around 300,000 XP per hour, and our second to last stop before skill mastery. Right before level 99, you can make Extended Super Anti-Fire at level 98 also after completion of Dragon Slayer 2. To make them, you'll need a 4-dose Super Anti-Fire and 4 Lava Scale Shards. This works like Stamina Potions and Anti-Venom, and 7,681 potions are needed to take you to that coveted Herbler Cape. Alright fellas, so now for some alternative methods you can try, some of which I don't really recommend because it's either way too slow, way too inconvenient, or a combination of both. First of all, we have some potions that may seem like they provide great experience per hour on the wiki, but they're not really popular, leading to even lower GP per XP. Some of these are Ancient Brew, Metified Remedy, and the Forgotten Brew. Nobody I know uses these, so we'll be sitting on your Grand Exchange offers for a long time. Next, we have the Sanfu Serum, and you will profit from this, but since one of the ingredients is untradeable, you'll need to get it yourself. This will lead to much lower XP and GP per hour. A great potion to make yourself, since they are one of the most expensive potions in the entire game. If you're extremely cheap and lazy, you may buy grimy herbs, and then clean them either automatically or manually. This will always bring you profit, since clean herbs will always be more expensive than the grimy ones, but XP per hour won't be great whatsoever. In order to make even more money but less experience per hour, you can then use herbs on vials of water to turn them into unfinished potions to sell them for more GP. We also have the Archaeus spell called the Grime. With it, you will clean an entire inventory of herbs with a single cast, and you may profit from a lot of herbs by doing this. This is a great training method we talked about during the magic guide, and you will also get some magic experience in the process. Last and definitely not least, not a great way to get experience per hour, but if you have a leftover crystal shards from doing activities in Prifinus for example, you can grind them for 10 dust per piece. By adding those to many potions in the game, you can get profits, and at the time of making this video, Divine Super Combat Potions are the best bang for your buck. And now, scapers, what do I personally recommend to go from levels 1 to 99? As you can see, Herblore is pretty expensive, so I have a few options for you. One for great experience per hour, another one for profit, another one for budget training, and just one more to speedrun the skill. For a fairly balanced road to 99, make Attack, Anti-Poison, Strength, Energy, Prayer, Super Attack, Super Energy, Super Strength, Super Restore, Stamina, Anti-Venom, and finally Anti-Venom Plus. We are excluding the Ceradum and Bruce because they are actually pretty expensive. For profit, you will do one of two things. Either automatically or manually cleaning herbs. Additionally, you can add them to vials of water. Or casting Degrime on the highest level herb you can. Of course, that's going to give you profit. Prices are almost always fluctuating, so check the wiki before bulk buying items. Additionally, you can make super anti-fire potions starting at level 92 after a Dragon Slayer 2. For budget training, we will make attack, anti-poison, prayer, super attack, super energy, stamina, anti-venom, and anti-venom plus. Almost the same as the first one, but I'm excluding expensive potions for less cost. And finally, if you want to make herblor an even faster skill, I recommend making the highest potion you can make at all times. Then, you will make stamina potions from 77 to 84, extended anti-fires from 84 to 87, anti-venom from 87 to 98, and finally extended super anti-fire from 98 to 99, all by one ticking ingredients on the respective potions for obscene experience per hour. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for the Herblore Guide, thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to tell me how you would get level 99 Herblore, or if you already have it. A massive, massive thank you to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolutely insane, and your support goes a long way. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below to subscribe monetarily and receive a ton of benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, and of course for the next 1 to 99 guide, where I will show you how to achieve mastery in the mining skill. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and 
I will see you then. Ba-ba-ba-ba. Oh, peace. <laughs>